Hello friends. In this video, we will learn about reproduction in plants. The process by which an individual produces young ones of its own kind is known as reproduction. It leads to an increase in number of individuals of a species and maintains the continuity of life. A plant also reproduces more plants of its own kind. Parts of plants are categorized into two, vegetative and reproductive. Root, stem and leaves are vegetative parts of a plant. They are mostly responsible for the growth of a plant. They may also help in the process of reproduction. In most of the plants, flowers are the reproductive organs that enables the plant to multiply. The modes of reproduction in plants are broadly classified into two categories, asexual and sexual. In asexual reproduction, the plant reproduces without the involvement of seeds. New individual is produced from a single parent. As a result of this, the offspring produced is identical to the parent. Plants adopt different methods for asexual reproduction. These methods are spore formation, fragmentation, budding, and vegetative reproduction. Spore formation Plants such as ferns and mosses seen especially in hilly areas have spore-producing structures on leaves called sori. The spores are tiny, usually single-celled asexual reproductive units and are surrounded by a tough coat for protection. When spores mature, the sori burst and release them into air. Whenever the spores come in contact with suitable substratum, where enough moisture is moisture is present, they germinate to give rise to young plants. Fungi, such as rhizopus or bread mold, also reproduce by forming spores. Fragmentation A green algae such as spirogyra, grows in water bodies such as ponds. It forms a film on the surface of water, called pond scum. It reproduces by breaking its filamentous body, into two or more parts after a certain period of growth. Each fragment then grows, into a new filament. This type of asexual reproduction is called fragmentation. Budding In some unicellular organisms, such as yeast, small bud-like projection starts growing on the body. Slowly it grows in size till a complete cell similar to the parent cell is formed. When, it gets detached from the parent body. In this way, a chain is formed giving rise to a number of new individuals. A process of multiplying with the help of formation of buds is called budding. Vegetative reproduction When a new plant is produced from the vegetative parts of the plant such as leaves, roots and stem, it is called vegetative reproduction or propagation. Roots of certain plants sweet potato, asparagus and dahlia, are swollen due to the storage of food in them. These roots have buds on them. When these swollen roots are planted in the soil, they grow into new plants. Plants such as bryophyllum, can reproduce by growing some plantlets, from the notches present at the end of the leaf margins. These plantlets fall on the soil and grow into new plant. In some underground stems, reproduction takes place in the following ways. Potato is a swollen underground stem, modified to store food. It is also called potato tuber. Potato tuber has buds, eyes that grow into a new plant. If a cut potato with an eye on it, is planted under the soil, it grows into a new plant. Rhizome is an underground stem with scaly leaves, buds and roots. Ginger and turmeric are examples of such plants. Onion is a type of modified shoot. It has a bulb with thick, succulent leaves. Such bulbs are capable of producing new bulbs with the help of buds. Plants such as grasses and wild strawberries grow along the ground. In these plants, shoots develop from the sides which have buds. These buds grow into new plants. These sideways extending shoots are called runner. Plants such as Colocasia and Gladiolus, reproduction takes place with the help of swollen stems called combs. Artificial Vegetative Reproduction Plants can also be propagated by some artificial methods. Such methods are used by farmers and gardeners to grow a variety of plants. 
Growing plants through artificial methods is known as artificial propagation. Some methods of artificial propagation are cutting, grafting and layering. In cutting, a piece of shoot, root or leaf can be used to grow a plant. In plants such as rose, sugarcane, their stem is obliquely cut and planted in the soil. This stem then grows into a new plant. In grafting method, the parts of the plant are joined to grow together. These parts can be of the same type of plants or of different type of plants. The plant that has a well-developed and a sturdy root system is used as a stock. The other part of a plant, which is grafted onto the stock, is known as the scion. The two parts are placed in such a way that their vascular tissue joins together to successfully grow as a single plant. In layering method, the branch of a plant is bent down to touch the ground. This branch is then covered with soil. After some time, roots start growing from the covered part, which is then separated from the original plant. This method is used to reproduce plants, such as jasmine and croton. The advantages of vegetative reproduction are as follows. Plants that do not produce seeds, can be grown by this method. Vegetative plants grow faster, than the ones produced by seeds. The plants reproduced by this method, are exactly the same as the original plant. This is helpful for farmers, as they get the exact copies of the required plant. These plants need less attention, compared to the plants grown by other types of reproduction. The plant cells is used in growing new plants, under sterile or germ-free conditions is known as the tissue culture technique. In this method, some tissue is cut off from growing tip of a plant. This tissue then separated into cells. These cells are put in a nutrient medium, containing inorganic salts, sugars, vitamins and hormones which are required for growth and differentiation of cells. Cells are allowed to grow into small plantlets in these controlled conditions. The plantlets are then transferred to pots in soil. Plants such as asparagus, chrysanthemum and certain orchids can be grown through this method. Sexual mode of reproduction involves fusion of reproductive cells called the gametes. The gametes are of two types, male gametes and female gametes. They are produced in special structures, present inside the flower of a plant. The outermost whorl is of sepals that are green in color. Second whorl is of colorful petals. Third whorl has the male sex organs, stamens. And the innermost whorl has the female sex organ, pistil. The stamen consists of a filament and an anther. The anther has lobes which contain minute pollen grains. The female organ, pistil has three parts. Ovary, style and stigma. Stigma is a lobe-like structure, which is connected with the ovary through tube-like structure called style. The ovary is the swollen part in which one to many ovules are present. The stigma provides platform for the pollen grains to germinate. Flowers such as China Rose, Sweet Pea and Mustard have both sex organs in a single flower are called bisexual flowers. As they have all parts of flower, they are also called complete flower. Some others, such as flowers of papaya and mulberry plants, have either male or female sex organ and are called unisexual flowers. Since they lack one of the sex organs, they are also called incomplete flowers. When the anthers mature, they burst and release the pollen, which get transferred to the stigma for fertilization. This process is called pollination. In self-pollination, the pollen from the anther, get transferred to the stigma of the same flower. It occurs only in bisexual flowers. While in cross-pollination, the pollen from the anther of one flower get transferred, to the stigma of another flower of the same plant or another plant of the same kind. Cross-pollination can take place in both, bisexual as well as unisexual flowers. In order to carry out cross-pollination, some external agents are required for transferring the pollens from one flower to another. Thus, some natural agents such as birds, insects, animals, wind and water help in transferring the pollen. 
They are called pollinating agents. Many insects feed on the nectar of flowers. They get attracted to the color and odor of flowers. When they sit on such flower, pollen grains released from anthers, stick to their body and get carried away to some other flower where they get deposited. Some flowers may not be colorful or have odor to attract insects or birds. These plants use wind as their agent of pollination. The pollen grains from such plants are blown away easily as they are very light. Plants such as maize and wheat show this type of pollination. Vallisneria is an aquatic plant that uses water, as the pollinating agent. The flowers in these plants release their pollen grains into the water, which are carried to the female flowers through water currents. Fertilization is the process of fusion of male and female gametes in the ovules. When the pollen grains get transferred to the stigma of the same or other flower of same kind, a thin tube is sent out into the pistil from the pollen grains called pollen tube. This is known as pollen germination. The pollen tube carries the male gametes towards the female gamete present inside the ovule. This pollen tube after penetrating the stigma, travels through the style and reaches the ovule in the ovary. The male gamete is released and fuses with the female gamete to form zygote. After zygote formation, the parts of the flower shed off after drying. Ovary persists and ripens to form the fruit. The zygote within the ovule starts dividing and growing and forms an embryo. Thus, the seed containing a young plant in the form of an embryo is formed. A seed contains a hard outer covering is called seed coat. An embryo. The embryo has one or two cotyledons with food material and embryonal axis. The embryonal axis has two parts, one plumulae that gives rise to the shoot system and the other is radical that gives rise to the root system. A plant produces large number of seeds that grow into new plants. If the seeds get scattered only around the plant, they will not be able to grow since each one of them will compete for space, sunlight and minerals. Due to lack of these requirements in a limited space, they may die. Therefore, it is necessary for seeds to get dispersed over a large area. The agents for seed dispersal in nature are air, water, animals and eve self-explosion. Seeds of certain plants adapt certain features such as wings, hair and are lightweight. These seeds are dispersed with the help of wind. Some examples are grass, cotton, dandelions and drumsticks. The seeds of plants growing in or near water sources are dispersed with the help of water. For example, coconut has hair trapped between its fibers that help it to float and is dispersed by water. The lotus fruit is spongy and floats easily. It is also dispersed by water. The seeds of many fruits, such as guava and tomato, are eaten by man and other animals. The seeds of these fruits pass undigested through the digestive tract and get dispersed when excreted out. Some animals such as squirrels and mice also help in egg dispersal by storing nuts in their burrows under the soil. When the conditions become favorable, these seeds germinate to give rise to EU plants. Some examples are oak and walnuts. Seeds like those of xanthium are have spines and get stuck to the body of animals or clothes of humans, they then get dispersed to distant places. Sometimes, fruits of certain plants such as legumes, castor, geranium, peas and acacia burst open forcibly after drying. The seeds of these plants get scattered in all directions. Germination is the process of growth of plant from its seed. Once the seeds are scattered, they need certain conditions to germinate, proper amount of moisture, air, temperature and soil. When these conditions are optimum, the seeds germinate into a baby plant by using the food stored in them. The process of germination starts with the intake of water by the seed. This water activates the enzymes present in tea seeds. Enzymes convert the stored food into a soluble form. The soluble food is the utilized by the radical and plumulae for growth. First the radical grows into root. Next. The plumulae pushes itself up and forms the shoot system. Once the baby plant starts growing, it makes its own food by photosynthesis. Hope you understand everything about different modes of reproduction in plants, seed dispersal and germination of seeds. 
Please do like, share and subscribe our channel for such informative videos.